What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Um, yeah, so this is your weekend roundup. It's early. It's early this week. After a couple of weeks of just me dropping the ball, I made it my business to get here and get it to you guys. Let me get my green leaf uh review up tonight too. You know, I'm back at work, y'all. That nine to five. Who the ten o'clock green leaf come on at ten o'clock. By the time I watch it, and then I had to go back. So I apologize that it's got it's a couple of days late, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. A couple of things I just want to touch on. So we have a couple of like nice things. I'm gonna start with the nice and end with the bullshit, I guess. Maybe I should do a double way around, but whatever. So Remy Ma and Papoose are getting a special um on just basically on black love and I'm here for it. Like I love Remy Ma. I have always loved Remy Ma. I've loved Remy Ma since going back to my conceited days and you know, the situation where she went to jail, I thought, I, let me not speak on it. But, you know, I was always here for her. And her and Papoose, that is love. Oh, You understand what I'm telling you? That's some real love. Like, we always hear about the woman sticking around for the man when he go away to jail and riding for him. And we be calling him, oh, she's stupid. She's stupid for sticking around. He in jail. But we got another, we got a situation where it's reversed and it's beautiful. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like, this is love, y'all. And they are pregnant, and I'm so happy for them. So, I don't know if I'm going to review it, because it's probably not going to be a whole lot there. But I'm definitely going to talk about it. You know, well, I shouldn't say it's not going to be a whole lot there. That's a lie. I'm not. But I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I can't say if I'm going to review it yet. But I'm definitely going to talk about it. I love Remy. Happy for them. Um, Ray J and Princess have a baby special coming up. I'm going to look at it. I'll probably talk about it again. Don't think I'm going to review it. Don't know if I could do 30 minutes of Ray J and Princess. And I think it's like a mini special. I don't think it's like a whole season. I think it's probably like a couple of weeks of her having the baby and, you know, that whole thing. Like, it's a baby special. And, and again, that's beautiful. Black love, black love, black love. So I'm here for it. I just don't know if I could do. I don't know how much Ray J at one time I could do. I'm just, that's, that's the only reason why I'm saying that. But I'm happy for them. While we're talking about pregnancy, Pusha Williams has announced that she is pregnant. I'm here for it. Now, they're, they're wrapping up filming for the season. They were in Tokyo a couple of weeks ago, and y'all know how they always do a big trip. And it was all over Instagram, and Eva was twerking at the club, and they were having a good time and everything. And so, um, they said they're, they're wrapping up. And, you know, normally, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta overlaps the holidays. So, the season should be starting pretty soon, because I know they always take the the break around Christmas and Thanksgiving because, you know, people with their family and ain't nobody watching, you know. So I know it always overlaps the holidays, and it usually starts somewhere in, like, mid-October. Right now, you know, they do the rotation. Right now, the Real Housewives of Dallas are on, and I think usually the Real Housewives of Atlanta overlap with the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't look at Orange County, and I don't look at New York. So... I'm sure they overlap somewhere in there as well. But I know that Beverly Hills usually overlaps. And I'll review Beverly Hills. I love Beverly Hills. Them bitches. Let me tell y'all something. Dallas is start. Dallas is almost on Beverly Hills level. But when I tell you that Beverly Hills is just money and it's just money for money's sake. Like, it's the kind of money that you don't have to talk about money. You just have it. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these shows, people talk about what they have. Or they make it so obvious what they have. They wearing, you know, Gucci, 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 Gucci. Fendi, 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 Fendi. Everybody know what you have. But Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, it's just money for no It's just money. And the Real Housewives of Dallas, they have some some heavy hitters on there right now, too, that it's just money. Like, um, my girl Cameron, when she did her slumber party, bitch. Look at my review on that episode where they took the private jet in their pajamas to their palace outside of Vail, Colorado. Bitch, whatever. Anyway, so I don't forgot what I was talking about. Oh, so Portia's pregnant. Happy for her. Um, if you've been following her Instagram, she's been posting pictures of her and this dude for a while. And they seem happy and in love. And I'm happy for her. Portia irritates my soul most of the time. But the one thing Portia has always just wanted was somebody to love her and somebody to give her a baby. Honey, she seemed like she got it. I'm happy for her. I hope it's 
I hope it works out for her. Now, I'm hearing some conflicting reports on Kenya's situation. I heard Kenya was getting a baby special. Now, I'm hearing Kenya's off the show again. I don't really know, and I don't think we're going to know until the show starts. Because I have heard everything from she's off the show altogether to she's a friend of the show to the show was boring, so they were going to bring her back because they need some spice to she's back off the show to she's going to get a baby special. I guess we'll know when it happens because, honestly, I have no idea. I did see um, a live, a piece of a live of her. Um, shout out to, I think it's Leyland Lay Lay um, on um, YouTube who does celebrity gossip. And she posted some of a live between Kenya and her, her husband. And they kind of got into an argument over the invitations to the baby shower. I ain't watched the whole clip, but I'm saying that he seems to be a little more open to being on social media so maybe he's a little more open to being on the show i don't know but we're gonna find out in a couple of weeks okay now look y'all i know i don't know how many of my um of my tribe are sports people i'm a sports person i'm not gonna say i look at every single sport fanatically but i look at a lot of sports i love sports and i love football and i know right now it is not um it is taboo, I guess, to like football because between CTE and Colin Kaepernick, we ain't supposed to be watching football and all that. I watch football. I love you, Kaepernick, and I support Kaepernick, and I support the fact, but that's a whole nother video for another day, and I've actually done a podcast about it. That's another video for another day. So, but with that being said, last weekend, if you, are, if you watch football, last weekend, Vontae Davis, who I'm from, I'm from D.C. He's a homegrown guy. He went to Dunbar High School. My aunt actually taught him. She taught at Dunbar. And she actually taught Vontae and his brother, Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis currently plays for the Redskins, but he's had a great career. Won a Super Bowl. All that good stuff. And... <laughs> Actually, my aunt taught Vernon Davis. I can't say for certain that Vontae went to Dunbar before somebody come tell me I'm wrong. But she did teach Vernon Davis, and he signed her yearbook and all that good stuff. And he went to the University of Maryland before he went on to go to the NFL. Vontae Davis followed in his brother's footsteps and was able to get into the NFL. Now, Vontae Davis has moved around a little bit more than his brother. Vernon Davis was pretty solid for a while with the 49ers. Like I say, won the Super Bowl and everything. Um, he, he had a couple of, of teams before he, he's been with the Redskins for about three years and he's going to probably retire here. Like I think if, and when I shouldn't say if, when his career with the Redskins is done, I feel like Vontae, I mean, uh, Vernon will probably retire. Vernon actually has a whole nother career as an artist. He's actually, he actually does art and he, I think he, I want to say he opened up an art gallery when he lived in, um, San Francisco, but don't quote me on that either y'all. But I know art is his thing. I'm going way off on the tangent. With all that being said, Vontae Davis was playing for the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Buffalo Bills were getting their butt kicked, I must say. And the Buffalo Bills are a horrible team. But, honey, I am a Washington fan. I have seen horrible. You know, you stick, you, yeah. I done seen it. At halftime of the football game, Vontae Davis said, you know what? I'm not feeling this no more. Yeah, I'm going to retire. I'm out. At the half t- he couldn't even wait two more quarters and do it at the end of the game. He said, y'all ain't going to embarrass my ass. I'm getting the fuck up out of here. And he packed his shit, put in his papers, honey, and he went home. Ain't tell nobody. Coaches ain't know what was going on. The press was scrambling trying to figure out what was going on. Honey, who the fuck does that? Like, who does that? That is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life, y'all. He quit at halftime. And he just, he retired. He said, I'm done. Now, the life of a football player is a lot of things. And I know it's a lot of wear and tear in your body. And I know it takes a lot to get yourself ready for a new season. 
uh, training camp, c- conditioning, new coaching staff, if it's a new team. Like, I get it. And maybe he was ready to go and he was just trying to hold on and realize, I just can't do this shit. Not another. Like, I would think of that commercial. Not another day with a parent. Not another day. Not... I, has, I get it. Maybe that's where he was coming from. He was like, I can't do this another day. But you couldn't have waited till the end of the game. You couldn't have faked the injury. And then at the end of the game, said your goodbyes. Like, you couldn't have. But on a serious note, if he really just couldn't do it and it was going to become a, a issue, like, you know, a mental type thing, I'm glad that he did it rather than flick out, flick off or make a situation worse. But I just think that, I just, I just think that was kind of fucked up. And it's funny because I actually taught, uh, Vontae and Vernon's, um, sister, I actually taught them and, um, taught her and, um, it was interesting. She, it was interesting. It was interesting. And, um, you know, she'd be gone a lot on Mondays because she went to the game, like flew out to the game on Sunday and stuff like that. But look, I couldn't be mad at her. If my brother played in the NFL, I'm going to, I'm going to as many games as, as he going to let me go. How about that? How about that? But anyway, so yeah, I just thought that was crazy that Varte Davis, and we're going to probably talk about it on the podcast. We haven't done a podcast in a couple of weeks, but um, everybody's schedule has just been really crazy. But I think we're going to try to get it together. Um, my, if you watch the podcast, you know my two co-hosts, both of them have a birthday, and they're both of them are Virgos. And so they've, mm-hmm. and um, Face's wife, best friend, best friend's wife, other best friend. Like, we got Virgos coming. I got Virgos coming out of my gazoo. I have so many Virgo birthdays in my life. My nephew's birthday was yesterday. He's one. He turned one. Y'all know that's my baby. You know, his father is a Virgo. Like, it's I got Virgos. My, my, my cousin's a Virgo. Virgo's coming out of my ass. So, it's been a lot going on. Like, every weekend has been spoken for. For real, for real. But we are definitely going to try to get a podcast up. We were trying to get one this weekend. But I don't think we ever... Because I'm, I'm going to the football game Sunday. So, I'm not going to be able to do a Sunday. But I'm going to be with Mink. Maybe me and Mink will do something while we're at the game. Like a little snippet, a little maybe a halftime show or something like that. Just something to throw up. Because that's who I'm going to the game with. Mink is a... The Redskins are playing the um, Green Bay Packers. And Mink is a Green Bay Packers fan. And she invited me to the game. So we're going to be talking a lot of shit and having some fun. Anyway. That's for the people who watch the podcast. I know who I'm talking about. If you don't watch the podcast, go get it. Get into it. It's on... It's, episodes are loaded. Go get into it. They're on the channel. Boom. But anyway... All right, here's go a couple of the bullshits now. Dr. G from Married to Medicine and his mistress. Now, Dr. G went on the radio show V10, whatever, the big, y'all know. All of a sudden, this radio show has blown up. I ain't know, because I don't live in Atlanta, so I ain't know nothing about this radio show until the last couple of weeks between the Dr. G stuff and now Cat Williams, which I'm going to get to, y'all know I'm going to get to that one. Um, it's just been kind of all over the place, but... Dr. G's mistress went on to the radio show to sort of rebut. Because Dr. G went on first. He opened up the door. And so she went on to sort of rebut, defend herself, tell her side of the story. Which is fair. Now, because people were like, well, why is she on there? He opened the door. He went on there, told his story. She has every right to rebut it. And if I am the program manager of the radio station, I'm letting her get on to tell her side of the story. One, for ratings. Duh. But two... You you gave the platform to one person. It is only fair that you allow the other person to have their say, especially in a situation like this. Like, we ain't talking about murder or nothing. We're talking about an affair. Now, her version of the story is that she didn't know that... I'm just going to hit the hot spots because I'm going to tell y'all what I think. She didn't know Dr. G was married. She didn't know who he was, that they went out um, twice, you know, the first night, and then they hooked back up the second night. That they did have oral sex. She didn't say who did what, but they had oral sex. And that he wanted to have sex without a condom. She stopped him, told him he had to go get a condom or what, nothing going down. He left to go get a condom. Hit her with the text message like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and go home. Enjoy the room. The next day, when the bill slid under the door, she found out his last name because she didn't even know his last name. No judgment. No judgment. Because I'm not going to shame, I'm not going to slut shame this woman because she was willing to have a one night stand and she was willing to have a one night stand with a man and she didn't know his last name. I'm going to get to that, but I'm not slut shaming her from that point of view. Um, now, then she said that once she found out who she, who he was, 
that's when she hit up Quad in her Instagram and her DMs because she said, if it were me, I'd want to know. Okay? Those are the hot spots. So let's 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 break this down. Let's go one by one and let's break this down. First of all, excuse me. You not knowing who Dr. Greg is. I 120% can say that I believe that part of it. Here's the reason why. I didn't know who the fuck Dr. Greg was before three weeks ago when I started reviewing Married to Medicine. I never looked at Married to Medicine. I never watched the show, and I don't live in Atlanta. So, because people were like, I just find it hard to believe. You don't know who he is. Y'all, get out of your own world. There are people who don't watch certain TV shows and don't know who these people are. Up until recently, I ain't watched Black Ink Crew. I ain't watched Black Ink Crew Chicago. I didn't watch Married to Medicine. I ain't watched Basketball Wives. Now, Basketball Wives I knew a lot more about because... One, these people are more celebrity-ish. And Basketball Wives, you know, I can't, I have watched a few episodes here and there. Married to Medicine, I had never seen. Not nail one episode until this summer. Not one. I knew it came on Bravo. I knew what the premise was. I couldn't have told you three people. The only reason why I knew Dr. Jackie was on the show is because I look at other reality shows and Dr. Jackie must be the only fucking OBGYN in Atlanta because all of them seem to go to her. Um, Tamar, I want to say, went to her. Um, who else? Um, Candy went to her. And it was another show I looked at where she, Dr. Jackie was her doctor. So I, my thing is... That's how why I knew who I knew who Dr. Jackie was. And I knew she was on the show. I knew that there was some infidelity issues, but I didn't know which characters it involved because I don't watch the show. So when I watched the season back and I saw that it was Dr. Jackie, I was like, "Well, damn, it was Dr. Jackie and her husband." I remember hearing the buzz about somebody cheating on somebody. But y'all, if you don't watch something and you see stuff, as much as I'm on the shade room and I'm scrolling Instagram and stuff. If it's not people I know who they are, I keep scrolling because I don't, it means nothing to me because I don't fucking know. Like, I don't look at um, Westworld. So when stuff is up about Westworld, I keep scrolling. I don't watch it. Handmaiden's Tale, I keep scrolling. I don't watch it. So I can definitely see how you wouldn't, that this person wouldn't know who Dr. G was. What I am going to say is, I don't believe you didn't know he was married. I believe you and your girlfriend knew that he was married. Knew Because she said, well, him and his friend were married. I believe that y'all knew these men were married. That I believe. Whether they had their ring on or not, I think you believe. And I don't, I, I believe he probably took his ring off. I could believe that. But I believe you knew they were, that he was married. You said that you were in the medical, that you, like in the medical something. She did something in the medical field. Like she sold medical equipment or something to that effect. So you knew that these two men were doctors. I do believe that you thought, oh. It's a doctor. Just like most people will be like, oh, a doctor or, or a lawyer. You think he make a lot of money, I'm going to bag him. So if you didn't think he was married, you were thinking, I'm about to bag him. He about, I'm about to get him. I see Louis Vuitton in my future. Right? Or if you knew he was married, you was like, mm, I'm about to be taken care of. He looking for a side piece. I'm not trying to shame her. I'm just saying I think this was her thought process. I don't think she knew who Dr. Greg was, but I do. Th she knew he was a doctor. And forget about the TV personality. Isn't that what we accusing? Well, we, not me. Isn't that what people are accusing Quad of? That she just married him for the come up because he's a doctor? So why wouldn't some stranger do the same thing and be like, oh, it's a doctor. I'm about to get it in. So that. I believe... That part that she didn't know who he was, but I do think that she thought he had some money and thought maybe there was some opportunity. I'm not going to shame her for wanting to have a one-night stand um, one way or the other, whether she thought that would increase her chances of creating a long-term situation or whatever. I don't think she went into it with the intention of blackmailing him. I really don't. I don't. However, I do think she did. Now, she made it seem like Dr. Greg's version of the story was so different from her version of the story when it really was not. Her version of the story was we had oral sex. He wanted to have consent. He wanted to have sex. I was with it. I just wanted him to get a condom. He didn't have a condom. His boy didn't. He called his boy. His boy didn't have a condom. I was like, well, you need to go to the store. Go get you a condom. And when he left, he hit her up and was like, you know what? 
I'm just going to go ahead, go home, enjoy the room. That's the exact same fucking story he told. The only thing was he didn't elaborate on how far things went with y'all. Like, he didn't say y'all had oral sex. He said that y'all fooled around. But my thing is, read it between the lines. Read between the lines. He said y'all fooled around. And then he came to his senses. He hit you up and said, you enjoy the room. I'm going home. The only difference is that you gave us more details. But he told us the story. He came to his senses. He went home. I believe, because look, and I ain't going to tell none of my business. But when things happen that get you out of the moment, you start thinking. And so probably the time it took him to put his clothes on, go down on that elevator. He probably didn't want to buy the condoms in the... The store at the hotel. Because, you know, the store at the hotel, they keep condoms. They got it. And I'm sure he was at the Four Seasons or some shit. They got it. And they could probably be very discreet about it. However, probably didn't want to do that. You were like, all right, let me go down to this CVS down the street or whatever they got down, Rite Aid, whatever they got down there in Atlanta. And the time it took you to do all that, you were like, you know what? I'm about to really make a really bad decision. Let me take my ass home. That's the same story. And then he, because he said on the reunion, the way she found out who he was, was because he was stupid and forgot about the bill. All of us know about that bill sliding up under the door, whether you paid the bill or not. Even if you paid your bill, they still give you a paper bill. They slide it up under the door unless you tell them you don't want them to do that. And and in that case, you can take, put, pick the bill up in your hand or they can email you or whatever, depending on how the level of the hotel that you in. But he wasn't thinking. He got one night, thought he was going to be in and out. He didn't think about that. So that's when she got his last name. Now, people were like, well, why would she Google him? Like, who Googles a one-night stand? You do when you think you're trying to reel a fish. Again, I think, I don't think she knew who he was, but she knew, she thought he had some money. So you Google him, you find out what hospital he works at. You find out what his specialty is. You find out how long he's been in medicine. You find out them details so that you can accidentally bump into him again. Right? Because you got his number. If he texted you, he, y'all got each other's phone number. So, I don't understand her purpose for going on the show, making it seem like she had to clear her name. I don't feel like he lied on her. I really, up uh, now, the only thing I think is a discrepancy is the whole blackmail piece. I do think she, I think when she Googled um, him and found out who he was, oh, I do think you hit them up and was like, um, if y'all don't give me X, Y, Z amount of money, I'm going to the blogs. I absolutely believe that. Now, that I believe, I believe that 120% that you threatened to go to the blogs. Now, that I believe, I believe that. But anyway, all right. Y'all know I'm not the biggest Beyonce fan, and this is all I'm going to say about this whole Beyonce bullshit. Supposedly, her former drummer, so she was Beyonce's drummer for seven years. She got fired for whatever reason she got fired, and now all of a sudden, she's talking about Beyonce is a witch, and she practices the dark arts, and she's afraid for her life, and she wants to restrain and order. Bitch, please. Let me tell y'all something. I ain't the biggest Beyonce fan, but I don't believe this bullshit. I'm always leery of people that get fired and then have a whole lot to say on the back end. Also, don't you have an MDA? I know Beyonce. She wrote a, She put it in her song. She put it in her lyric. I know you got an MDA. So why are you talking? I don't believe it's true. But even if it is true, are you supposed to be telling us? Anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. But I don't believe that shit. Now, this is what I do believe. One thing I'm gonna say about I say a lot of I say a lot of great things about Beyonce, but the one thing I'm gonna say about Beyonce is Beyonce knows she knows when to pick up on something new, and she knows how to market it. She knows how to drop teasers. If you are a true Beyonce fan, I ain't even a fan at all, and I'm picking up on the clues. For example, when you start seeing Beyonce wearing them um them cornrows a lot. She about to get ready for something. Because see, she wearing the cornrows so she can because she dancing. She in the studio four, five hours every day getting her routines together. And she ain't got time to keep her hair dude. So she get them braids. Like, that's how you know she about to drop some shit. Beyonce about to give y'all something new because I done seen too many pictures of the braids. When you start seeing more pictures of her. It just she's she's good about it. She's very controlling of her image, and trust and believe everything that's on her official websites is very calculated. So with that being said, 
I don't think it's an accident that in the last two weeks we have seen a picture of Beyonce with Latoya Luckett and Latavia. I don't think it's an accident. I think it's very calculated and I think it's very purposeful. Now Latoya is very pregnant. So do I think that something's about to pop off like in the next couple of months? No, I don't. Do I think that Maybe this time next year we'll be looking at a, 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 a DC reunion. Yep. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I wouldn't be surprised to see a surprise appearance at the Super Bowl. She good for that. Even though Maroon 5 is going to be the band of the Super Bowl. I didn't even touch on that because I'm not a... I, don't, I couldn't name you one Maroon 5 song. At all. Like, at all. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe, what else? NBA All-Star Game. Like, I just would not be surprised to see something drop. I wouldn't be surprised to see a new album. And I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see a tour pop off. And with that being said, because what else is there left for Beyonce to do, y'all? She gave you Miss Carter. She gave you her and Jay-Z with On The Run. She gave you Lemonade to let y'all know that shit wasn't perfect in paradise. And this is how we this is what we went through. Jay-Z gave you his side of the story. Then they gave you On The Run 2 to let y'all know, but we good now. Then they gave you an a, a album that they dropped while they were on On The Run 2 so y'all could get some of that. What's left? A Destiny's Child reunion. That's what's left. What's left? I'm not saying that she don't have nothing left as far as musically talented. I'm not saying that Beyonce could drop 20 more albums. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is as far as giving you something new. As far as surprising us. As far as something that the fans have been waiting for. Who ain't waiting for a, De a Destiny's Child reunion? A real one. A real with the original members plus Michelle reunion. Because you got to have Michelle. And I love Michelle. And y'all better not say nothing bad about Michelle in them comments. I love Miss Michelle. But it'll be like it will be like when New Edition came together and Johnny and Bobby was there. It'll be like that situation. They can work it out. So, I'm y'all mark my words. I'm going to give it, like I said, Latoya's pregnant. But she going to probably have that baby by Christmas. She gonna do the snapback because that's what the celebrities do. They do the snapback. She gonna get in the studio, get them vocals together, and she in between Greenleaf. Because if y'all don't know, Latoya Luck is on Greenleaf and she's doing the damn thing. Um, yeah, that's what I believe, y'all. All right, two more things and I'm gonna get out of here. I ain't mean to talk this long. The whole Cat Williams piece, what I'm not getting ready to do is go through the whole Cat Williams situation. Y'all know what's been going on. And if you don't, you can go to YouTube, Google Cat Williams, and 5,000 videos will pop up. Cat Williams went on the the um, the same radio station, V106, I guess it is, in Atlanta. But, um, what's it, uh, Fred Ski, something Ski, Frank Ski, and Wanda. I'm not going to touch about the, the piece between him and Wanda. He, he roasted the fuck out of Wanda. I, people say that Wanda started it. I don't think Wanda necessarily started it, but even if she started it, I don't think he needed to go that hard. And then there were some people who were like, well, don't pick a fight that you can't win. I get that. And they're comedians, and he's a roaster, and he could play the dozens of junk. We call it Joni. All of that, I get that, but you're a guest on, on their show. I just didn't feel like it was necessary to go there unless there was something else. Like, unless you and her had some other beef that we didn't know about. Because it just seemed so out of left field. But neither here nor there. He also went in on Tiffany Haddish. She also went in on Carmichael, Lil Rail, um, Hannibal. You know, basically saying that... Being sarcastic, but like, oh yeah, that's the that's the future of comedy, and I own all my stuff. That's why I don't get the same shine that the rest of them get because you know they don't. Um, a TV station, I mean, you know, the networks don't want to promote a show that they can't make money off of, and since I own everything, they ain't making no money. You know, and for that, I applaud you. I applaud the fact that you own your shit, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. I absolutely applaud that. But I compared this whole situation. What I thought of was. 
I feel like Cat Williams has an idea of what comedy is or what comedy should be. And if you don't fit that mold, then you're not a real comedian. And you ain't really on your grind. And you're not really paid your dues. Tiffany Haddish, I think it has been well documented that this woman has paid her dues. She might not be your kind of comedy. But don't take away what she's done. And don't minimize it and don't diminish it. And don't make it seem like because she hasn't done done it the way you think she should have done it. Or the way you think people need to get their shine, that it's less than or it's not important. Same thing with Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was grinding. Kevin Hart's been out there for a long time grinding. And he, he's getting his shine now, and he's doing a lot of great things with the publicity. Has he gotten a little bit much? Okay, maybe. But ain't nobody making you go see a Kevin Hart movie? Shit. That's just like when people talk about Tyler Perry. Who the fuck making you go see a Tyler Perry movie? And so, he backtracked a little bit. He apologized about some things he said. And then when they said when he saw Tiffany Haddish at the Emmys, he bowed down to her. Okay, cool. But I compare Cat Williams to that old dude that be talking about how new rap ain't shit. And it ain't like back in the day rap. And people don't really know. They don't respect the art because they don't know nothing about Bronx. And they don't know nothing about what the real hip-hop is. And they like this bubblegum mumble shit. Like, that's how I think about Cat Williams. When he was going off, I'm like, okay. So he the old dude at the barbershop that's talking about rap ain't shit. These new rappers, they ain't shit. Da -da 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 -da. Back in my day, Run DMC and... And don't get me wrong, I'm one of them people. I'm old school all day. I grew up on that. That was my era. I came up in the golden age of hip-hop, okay? And I absolutely feel that way about a lot of the music. But I sound like the angry old lady at the barbershop or the beauty store, whatever. And so that's how I feel about Cat Williams. I honestly, I would, I don't really hear Cat Williams give a whole lot of people shine. Like, he's very critical of a lot of people. And my thing is, yo, you... You in a glass house. I don't think you need to be throwing stones. And I'm not even talking about his criminal mischief and all that stuff. I'm just talking about in general. Like, some of your comedy specials have been hit or miss. Like, he's had some funny, hold my stomach rolling around on the floor. And then he's had some, hmm, that was all right. Everybody don't hit it out the park every time. Like, everybody doesn't hit it out the park every time. So, for me, that's how I saw it. I think that I just think that that's what I just think that's what Cat Williams does. I just do. I just do. All right. Last but not least, y'all. Tamar Braxton hasn't had a great week. Again, I ain't gonna rehash every single thing. Um, but what I am going to say is. The whole situation between her and Funky Dineva, I spoke on it when I did my Queen's Court review again. Y'all can go look at it. But we know that Tamar did come back and apologize to Funky Dineva because she said she got some misinformation. She jumped the gun. And when she went back and looked at the show, she realized that what was told to her was not accurate. And that she actually found it funny. Like, she said, you know, I found the jokes funny. You know, I can laugh at myself too. You know, that kind of thing. Um... Now, the Braxton Family Reunion, I mean, you know, the Braxton's Family Show. I've been saying for a couple of weeks now that I think the shit is fake. I think that this whole situation has been, um, was created for Ayala to come in and fix their life. I believe it was a setup. Um, that's what I believe. And this episode this week, did. I'm not doing a separate review. The episode this week, it absolutely made me feel that way. Like, it was just too... Tony was so out of the loop. She didn't know what was going on. I do, but I'm going to tell you a couple of things I believe. I believe that Tamar has separated herself from her family. And when um, Tawanda showed up, I think when she was like, so what you doing here? I think she meant that shit. Like, she knew they were filming. But and when she said that I'm good, like, I have put people in a certain place in my life. And I am good with where I am. I believe that, too. Because Tamar is one of those people. She's like a quad that your loyalty is to her and to her only and if she feels like anybody is in any way shape or form disloyal to her then she feels like they are expendable including her family 
And what she doesn't understand is that sometimes people are just telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And it ain't always hate. It ain't always about um, coming at you or coming for you. Sometimes it's really just about letting you know, look, this is what's good. So... She agrees to go on Ayala Van Zandt. You can tell she don't really want to do it. She's hesitant, whatever. But she agrees to go. You know it's a disaster going in the door. So she comes. She goes on Wendy Williams last week, and among other things, she called Ayala a fake and a fraud and a phony or whatever. So now they're saying that Ayala is thinking about legal action because this could hurt her brand. It could affect her TV show, so forth and so on. What I'm going to say is that there's a very high bar in the legal world for slander or um what's the other word they use slander or you know the other word they use i can't think of it right now especially when you're a celebrity it's a very high bar and when you are in the business that ayala is in that might be a can of worms you don't necessarily want to open because the thing about therapy is when it works people love you when it doesn't work you're the reason why it didn't work so like for i'm gonna use nephew for example when Nephi went on Ayala's show the first time, Ayala did some, some things for Nephi. One, she gave Nephi an opportunity to come to her weekend seminar for women. Nephi didn't go. She told Nephi she needed to go to counseling. Nephi went to counseling. She only went as long as her insurance lasted. I'm not going to judge that. But while she was in counseling, they diagnosed her as bipolar and told her she was self-medicating with the alcohol. She rejected she rejected that diagnosis, wouldn't take the medication, and she is still drinking alcohol. It was something else Ayanla asked her to do that she didn't do. Then when she came back to the show, Ayanla gave her some homework. She showed up to do taping, hadn't done the homework. So when people say, well, did Ayanla fix your life? She's going to say no. But did you do the work? Did you make a good 100% effort into making this work and it didn't work for you? And now you say, well, Ayala, everything you told me to do, the exact opposite happened. And this is why I'm fucked up now. So I'm just saying that I'm not saying that something shouldn't be said because Tamar's mouth is just real fucking reckless. However, I'm just saying Ayala... It's a hard burden. And she knows this. I ain't no lawyer. I'm sure she's talked to people and she ain't fucking know this. But it's a hard burden to to prove. And it's a can of worms I don't know you want to open. Because everybody that you ever tried to help that didn't it didn't work out is going to come forward and be like, she ain't do shit for me. She made my life worse. You understand what I'm saying? But Tamar, you really need to watch your mouth. You really need. You're so fucking reckless. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't do Tamar. I just can't do her. But anyway, that's my weekend roundup. I hope y'all are having a great start to your weekend, and I will see y'all before the night is over for Greenleaf. I'm gonna do. I'll do Greenleaf tonight before I go to bed. But I I need to get caught up on Dallas, and I have a couple of reviews I need to do for. Um, a couple of TV shows. I need to clean up my DVR this week because everything starts next week. It's like premiere week. Every show I watch premieres next week. So I got to clean my DVR out so I have room to tape all the shit I need to tape. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.